In this bin below, we have a hognose snake that was gifted to us by a fan. He is in a xanthic phase hognose. His name is Christopher Turk, and he recently started developing this lump. Or actually, I just noticed it at this size about two weeks ago. We noticed it right before we left for Costa Rica, so we weren't able to bring him in in time because vets are so swamped with appointments right now. And it wasn't like urgent, we felt. So when we got back, we uh, actually just yesterday brought him to the vet and we got him an x-ray or a radiograph. In this radiograph, it looks as if it's not a tumor or a cancerous growth or anything, which is great, but we don't know exactly what it is. Like, the vet and I both think it might just be poop that's stuck there for whatever reason. So we're gonna try something a bit unconventional to help him pass this poop. There was a recent case study with a tortoise that ate a bunch of gravel and became impacted. It was lethargic. It was on death's door. And the vets actually taped a personal massager to the underside or the plastron of the tortoise and let it run or vibrate for about five minutes twice a day and after two weeks approximately almost all of the gravel had passed through his system. So using massage therapy isn't very well known in the reptile world but it kind of seems like it worked on a tortoise. So we are going to try this method on a hognose snake to see if we can help him pass this poop. <laughs> Using vibration therapy isn't very well known in reptiles, but it's a well-known method used in mammals, including humans. Basically, the vibration acts as peristalsis. Peristalsis is when the body um, expands and contracts muscles in the intestinal tract, and that helps initiate the movement through that uh, canal, basically. So the vibration, in theory, should initiate the movement of this fecal matter through his body and hopefully exit out. If you think about it, like if you've ever brought, I guess, a reptile on a car ride, they often will poop in the car. So I'm thinking the vibrations of the car moving is kind of acting like peristalsis here. I mean, well, every time we go someplace, I have to poop. That is true. You usually poop <laughs> in the car. Sometimes yeah. you make it though. No, so. yeah, usually. <laughs> usually you make it. So what we're going to try here, and I really hope it works, I don't know if it will, is we're going to use this personal massager and we are going to tape it to the underside of his belly, right where this poop is stuck. And we're going to, just like in the to tortoise case study, we're going to turn it on its lowest setting for five minutes twice a day and see if it starts breaking down or it starts moving down towards the cloaca. Do you think we should mark where it is right now with like a sharpie? Let's do that. All right, I'm gonna mark the belly scute of where it starts coming out right here. And a sharpie isn't gonna hurt a snake. He'll shed and it'll all come off, honestly. Yep. But I do have to make sure it's pretty big so it's noticeable and he doesn't just wipe it off right away. All right, that is the beginning of his fecal matter that seems to be impacted. Now we have a few different options of surgical tape and vet wrap to use. Since it hasn't been used much in reptiles, we kind of have to figure it out on our own what, what's gonna work best here. Do you want to use the sport wrap? I think that might be the best because then it's not gonna stick to him. Like these two will stick to him. Yeah. But that will stick to itself and hopefully support it. And it's the same width. Yeah. So I was originally thinking we'd use the uh, surgical tape and do like two loops, one on each side, but this would cover the whole thing. Yeah, as long as he doesn't just slither out of it right away. Yeah, we'll see. He also really wants to do something with that pen. All right, we're gonna see if this will work. Come here, buddy. There we go. Okay. Are you just going to slide out of that? No, yeah, not well, easily. Not very easily, but it's going to take 30 seconds yeah, for him to go out. True. So what if we attached it just above where the fecal matter is? Oh, that would work. So it's going to have to be kind of snug. Can you escape that? Yeah, I think he's going to be, yeah, he's slowly yeah. getting out of that too. Dang it, you're too flexible as a snake. All right, so we might actually have to stick something to him. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, it's not super sticky. It'll come off him just fine. Yeah, let's try this one then. Okay, that's definitely going to stick. Okay. Now we just turn it on. We'll set him in here now because that's what yep. the owls are for. So now what we're going to do is set him in here so it doesn't vibrate against a hard surface and he has a little bit of cushion, but it'll still vibrate against his belly, but at least it won't be bouncing off of like the ground or something. All right, so now we're just gonna let it sit and the towels are what the case study with the tortoise used too And I guess it worked really well. And Give him five minutes with the massager. We'll, we'll come back. All right All right, it's been five minutes. Oh, it's still on him. That's still good. on him. Okay, we'll just turn that off How do we turn it off? Hold it for three seconds. Why do you know how to use this more than I do? I don't we bought it yesterday so. <laughs> All right there you go, buddy. Yeah, it's I like, pulled some stuck shed off of him. Yeah, huh. Yeah, it's just the outer layer of his scales. We'll have to make, maybe we'll use a, a less sticky one. Yeah, well, next we'll see. time. That's, I mean, he looks still, like it's still fine. Poop but. did not move, but I wasn't expecting it to really. So we're gonna do this twice a day now and we'll check back in in, I don't know, a week? Yeah. Or until he poops. When there's an update, we'll check back in. 
we're on day four and this could just be my imagination but this lump seems to be a bit smaller to me than it was originally we're gonna keep continuing the vibration therapy as we're calling it and we'll see what it looks like in a few more days what you doing? Well, I'm putting away dog food, but that has nothing to do with this video. No, it doesn't at all. But shout out to our friend Mandy, who saves dog food for us and donates it for our rescued reptiles. So what we're actually doing is uh, checking in on our hog nose that has been getting vibration therapy twice a day for about 14 days now, 16 days. I think it's been just over two weeks. Has it been two weeks now? Yeah, yeah, it has. Well, it started same. on 12, 18. 18. Oh, that's it? Oh, it's maybe a week and a half. Week, week and a half. Okay. He yeah, just actually, had it. It's been 11 days, but take a look at him. First off, you can't even see it from the top side. Yeah, where is the lump? I don't know because it's gone down so much. It's actually right here. So where's that line that we drew? Here's the line. What's interesting is the lump hasn't moved at all because it's still right there, but it is shrinking in size. So I was expecting it to move down his body and then eventually he'd poop it out, but instead it's just getting smaller. It's think... become a lot squishier too. Yeah, so I think the vibration is starting to like break down the poop, if that's what it is, which it sounds like, I mean, it's the only thing the vet and I could think of. So I think it's breaking it down and maybe he's passing bit by bit? Maybe. I don't know, but look how much smaller it's gotten. Like it's definitely still there, but it's not nearly as noticeable as it was. We have had, like scale spread here at first mm -hmm. when we first noticed it. Yeah, now it just looks like a big poop. So I think this might actually be working, mm -hmm. which is amazing, but we don't know for sure yet. So we're gonna check back in another week or so with another update. It has been three weeks today since we started the vibration therapy on the fecal matter on this hog nose. And take a look at Christopher. No lump to be seen. Okay, there's a teeny bit of a lump right there to be seen. You really only can see it when I hold him out like this. It looks a little swollen right there. And then from top down view though, you can like barely see it. So uh, as far as we're aware though, he hasn't pooped, which he may have. And maybe an employee has cleaned it up and then just not known that we're trying to monitor him and his poops. But I think what we're gonna do is give him maybe another week of the treatments and then we'll bring him into the vet for another radiograph to see what he looks like on the inside and see what happens to the, the mass inside of him. But regardless, it's like barely visible now. So we'll check back in another week with hopefully another good update. Oh my gosh, guess who pooped? <gasps> Christopher Turk, you pooped and you're eating. You haven't eaten in so long. Uh, probably because of that growth, but you can't even tell where the growth was. And he has a vet appointment in three days so we can see what he looks like on the inside. And, and, and you pooped. Oh my gosh, it passed through. All right, today is the checkup day on our hognose friend to see what he looks like internally on a radiograph or x-ray. So we've got Christopher Turk with us and, oh, are you angry? You're just getting an x-ray, that's it. And you look so good. I can see a little bit of the lump right there. You can kind of see where his belly dips down a little bit, but it looks so much better. So we're really curious to see what the x-ray or radiograph has to show us. And while we're heading in to get radiographs done, we're also gonna Bring our tricolor female because it's time for another round of gravid or fat. She uh, might be gravid or she might be fat. We don't know. So leaning up fat. I think at this point she might be fat too because she hasn't laid any eggs. She sure is eating a lot though and acting like she could be gravid. But we figure a radiograph would be a good way to know for sure. All right, we are at Dakota County Technical College and we're doing the follow-up radiograph on Christopher because the lump has like almost disappeared and he pooped, so, and he ate. So we have high hopes and I'm really curious to see what the remaining lump looks like if it's at all visible in a radiograph. So uh, the fun thing is at DCTC, vet students can learn from this too and they've been following his story. So it's all kind of for education as well. Okay, we have the results here and it looks actually like there's still a little bit of hoop. It still does look like poop right here, but it's definitely a lot less than it originally was. And what I see is that it's almost as if it's formed in like three little sections here, not just one big piece. So that's great too. It's kind of breaking down and I think he's going to be able to pass the rest of this just fine. As for the tricolor hog nose, uh, she's just fat. 
All right, we just got back. I pulled up today's radiograph and put it next to the original red from about five weeks ago. And this is a very noticeable difference. Like when we first brought him in, his scales were like pine coning out, I remember. It was so bad. And it was just one solid mass right here. And then today, look at how much less uh, swollen he is and the less obvious that lump is. And if you look really close, like I was kind of saying earlier, you can almost see three definitive lumps, I think, or segments. And not only is it diminishing in size overall, but I think that since it's breaking down into multiple pieces now, he'll be more likely to pass it. I didn't get as good of a picture or an image on my phone from today's, but you can still kind of see the difference there. And that's just incredible to see how much smaller it is now. That's crazy to me. It still definitely looks like poop, just like it did originally. It's just a different shape and much smaller now. It looks like his bones aren't stretched as much as they were the first time. Oh, that too? I didn't think of that. Yeah, because his bones are are like really stretched out there. Yeah. And then you come over here and it's like they all look uniform. I think he may be facing different directions here. Mm, like maybe. I think his head is up here on this one. Maybe his head is down here on this one based on the direction of the so, rib bones. Yeah. Okay, so he's reverse direction, but you can still get a good idea of the shape of it and how much smaller it is overall. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. Yeah. Our tricolor hognose snake is not gravid. She's Aww. just fat. She's thick with two C's. Yeah, more like six, I think. <laughs> you are- a, She is a round girl. She is very round and officially on a diet. I don't like the idea of having a diet, guys. We caught on to your trick. Yeah, I need food. I'm making babies. Now we know you're not, so <laughs> no extra food for you. But back to the main focus snake of this video, our little hognose snake, Christopher Turk. Uh, he is doing very well with the vibration therapy. He's got a little bit of waviness here, which seems kind of odd to me right above where his swelling is. Maybe that's just because where everything is was collected here and still kind of is, it's kind of moving around other things inside. Yeah, offset organs Maybe or something. offsetting. Yeah, exactly. So I'm a little curious about that, but on the radiograph, it didn't appear to be anything that was causing him any distress internally. He just looks a little bit funny right there. But mm -hmm. overall, the swelling has gone down dramatically and it seems like the fecal matter stuck in him is breaking down and getting smaller in size. And now since he pooped, we know that he can pass things through through. He's starting to be able to pass things through again. So I think we are uh, safe to kind of wrap up this video. Also, he's eating. That's another big yeah. thing, too. We know he's feeling better because he's eating. I think he's just going to have one big poop. I hope so. What still confuses me is that this hasn't moved. I mean, he has shed since we yeah. drew on him with the marker. I don't know what would be causing it to stay in one spot. But since it's going down in size and he's starting to poop again, I think he's going to be just Fine. So we are going to continue the vibration therapy twice a day for five minutes a day. We're going to keep monitoring him. Maybe keep an eye on the community tab on our YouTube channel and we can post further updates on there. But I think it's safe to, like I said, wrap up today's video here. Yeah, I think vibration therapy may actually be something to help constipated or even egg bound snakes. If we have an egg bound snake uh, later this year, let's hope we don't. <laughs> yeah, not that we're rooting for one. <laughs> <laughs> let's hope we don't. But if we do, we will probably revisit this technique and see if it helps with them. And maybe yeah. we can do another case study type video on their progress and see how it works. If it's gonna consistently work, this could be a breakthrough in the reptile vet community, you know? Because typically if you have an egg bound snake, it's not gonna turn out good. You can try to get the eggs out, but usually they, they're just so stressed from the whole event or they have secondary like infection from leftover egg particles from what I've heard. It never ends well, but with vibration therapy, maybe we can entice these snakes to lay all the eggs themselves and not have to go in surgically and cause extra stress mm -hmm. and pain. So yeah, something to definitely think about and consider and keep studying and testing. So it just goes to show there's always something more to learn in the reptile world. We're learning every day something new. This is honestly something that I didn't have high hopes for of actually working. Yeah, we started filming going, eh, we're not gonna use this. Exactly. We're like, oh, this isn't gonna go anywhere because it's just probably not gonna work. But then it started working. So this is a video. And even if it didn't work, we'd probably still make a post kind of introducing the idea like, hey, this is something that might actually work. And it worked! So how exciting is that? Well, thank you everybody for watching today's case study and vibration therapy on a hognose snake that was slash still kind of is, but was constipated. I hope you enjoyed this progress as much as we did. Thank you as always to our Patreon backers as well for your very generous support. You helped pay for a personal massager for this video. So you helped us 
help this hognose snake. That's an awkward thing to spend Patreon donations <laughs> on. Anyway, we're gonna end it there on that note. Thanks for watching. See you next time. So asking for a friend, do you think that would work on human constipation? Oh gosh, we're not gonna end it there. Thank <laughs> you.